We will not all do the same thing like you have learned, but all of us are co-laborers with God. And I want to show you three dimensions of labor with God. Number one, the labor of prayer and intercession. Just listen carefully. The first way to be a co-laborer with God, particularly with respect to kingdom come, the fulfillment of his program is the labor in prayer and intercession. Ezekiel 22 and verse 30 where we read, he says, and I sought for a man who would make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it, but I found none. Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 7 please, 29 7 Jeremiah. Let's read together, one to read. And seek the peace of the city, whither I have caused you to be carried away captive, and pray unto the Lord for it. Why? For in the peace thereof shall ye have peace. Wherever you find yourself, it is your responsibility to pray for the peace of that person, that organization, that city. It says for in its peace, you will find your own peace too. If there is no peace in that organization, you too, you will not have peace. If there is no peace in our nation, you too, you will not have peace. The business of prayer and intercession is one way to labor with God. 2 Corinthians 1.11 2 Corinthians 1.11 Ah, let's read together. Are you ready? One to read. Ye also helping together. How? By prayer for us. That for the gift bestowed upon us by the means of many persons, thanks may be given by many on our behalf. How did he ask for help? By praying for us. You are a co-laborer with God when you engage in the ministry of prayer and intercession. That means I am in partnership with God, making things happen, making his program advance. Listen carefully. I am in partnership with God for the healing of the nations, the healing of this family. I am in partnership with God in seeing that the next apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers arise. Partnership with God. Is someone learning? 2 Thessalonians 3 and verse 1 and 2. Profound scripture, 2 Thessalonians 3, 1 and 2. Finally, brethren, he's speaking to brethren, pray for us. This is the apostle now, mighty man, anointed man, great man of God, apostle per excellence. But he says, pray for us. The same way we are co-laborers with God, you are also co-laborers with us. You see, it happens both vertically and horizontally. It's an orientation that applies between God and men and between men and men. Pray for us. Number one, that the word of the Lord may have a free course unhindered and be glorified even as it is with you. Verse 2, it says your prayer content should also be that we may be delivered. We read it earlier from unreasonable and wicked men. Why? Because Satan also has men. And he would try to use those men to fight God's program. So in the place of prayer, you can pray and word of the spirit influences that manipulates the hearts and the minds of men towards working out purposes that are antichrist. Are we learning? Intercession. I want to teach you something about intercession that I've not taught you before. It was just quickening in my heart Effective intercession should have a threefold focus. We are looking at the three dimensions of labor as a co laborer with God, and we are now discussing the labor of prayer and intercession, or labor in prayer and intercession. And I'm showing you that effective intercession, if your intercession is to be effective, your focus must be threefold. Number one, establishing victory over demonic forces that must be the first focus of your intercession number two empowering the vessels with wisdom faith and power that is the second dimension of your focus 
So if you are ever praying for God's program, a man of God, a church, don't just pray at random. This should be the threefold focus. Number one, establishing victory over demonic forces because it is spirits that influence the minds and the hearts of men. Number two, you are praying for empowerment for the vessels, a supply of wisdom, a supply of faith, and a supply of power. Are we together? And then number three, the third focus is access to the heart of men. Access to the heart of men who translate as helpers. Any, if you have ever tried to pray for any man of God, particularly, I'm telling you, this is how to pray effectively. Oh Lord, bless him. Wipe his tears. Ah, it's, it's not a very wise prayer. The intercessory ministry must have a threefold focus. Number one, the demonic forces. You are establishing victory. The powers that try to manipulate men. The powers that try to manipulate systems to work against the program of God. Number two, the vessels themselves for wisdom and outpouring of wisdom and outpouring of faith and outpouring of power. And then number three, you are praying that God will raise men to stand by those vessels that they will have access into cities, access to systems and structures. You intercede like that for anyone or God's program and your intercession will be very effective. Most people pray, but the content of their prayer is not rich and wise. We just say a lot of things in prayer and say amen. The first way we labor with God is through prayer and intercession. And we're saying interceding should have a threefold focus. Not limited to the three, but they are foundational in terms of your focus. Warding of demonic forces that manipulates the hearts and the minds of men. Praying for empowerment for the vessels. Empowerment with wisdom, faith, and power. And then praying for access to the hearts of men. The men that are translated as helpers. Are we learning now? So the first way we labor in partnership with God is through prayer and intercession. You would notice that every week from a few weeks ago, we've been praying here, praying for the conference that is beginning this week. This is part of the principle. It is not just praying for the conference. Every week we pray for everything. There is no week that enters blindly and carelessly. We immerse every week richly in prayer and intercession. Do you know why? For this threefold reason. That all the demonic powers that fight the program of God and fight our role in that program that they be warded off through the power of prayer. Number two, that God will continue to grant us wisdom, grant us faith, and grant us the enablement of the Spirit. And then number three, that God will continue to raise help to make the work effective. Can I pray that prayer for you? Let me be an intercessor for you in one minute. That in the name of Jesus, who is the Son of the living God, I pray for you. The forces that fight God's program, fight your role in actualizing God's program, I curse them right now in Jesus' name. By the ministry of the blood, I decree and declare over you that every legal access Satan has over your life and over your bishopric, in the name of Jesus, let the blood speak right now. Let the blood speak mercy. Let the blood speak freedom. Let the blood speak jubilee. Let the blood speak liberty. Number two, I pray for you that the wisdom that is needed in this new season, wisdom grows because it is alive. The wisdom needed to scale your impact, the faith needed to dare things that men cannot even dare. And in the name of Jesus, the empowerment of the spirit that helps you to run through a troop and to leap over walls. In the name of Jesus, may they rest upon you. Empowered by wisdom, receive it. Empowered by the spirit of faith, receive it. By this impartation, fear dies in your life. The fear of the past dies in your life. 
The fear of opinions of men die in your life. The fear of failure dies in your life. The fear of the future dies in your life. In the name of Jesus. And then I pray for you. Seeing that even your destiny is men dependent. Everyone ordained by God to show up in your life, your ministry in this season. To make your calling and your election sure. I pray that speedily they will show up. I pray that speedily they will appear. I say it again, speedily they will show up. Speedily they will appear. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please be seated. I sought for a man. You want to come into that co-laboring partnership with God. Your first port of call is to engage strategically in prayer and intercession. Let me tell you this. If you are a man of God here, make it a culture to pray for your people. I pray for you. Ask God. A major part of my prayer is not for myself. Honestly. Are we together? There are people who don't pray for those around them. Leaders don't pray for the people under them. They allow the devil to just ravage their lives and destroy them. No. And you also have a responsibility to pray for me. Pray for Koinonia. You have been taught. You have been mentored. That as we are traveling right now, if in your mind you think, oh, Joshua Selman is traveling to U.S., traveling to Canada, he's going for a program, then you have not learned well. You should be on your knees all through. Even whilst you are following to be blessed, but you know. You see that now? It is, it is a million people in one man by grace going. I've taught you here, I never travel alone. We are in covenant. We go together. You may not be able to go there, but your prayers, as we travel your prayers, Lord, unction like never before. Let your word find cause. Let sinners be saved. Let the lost be saved. Let there be signs and wonders bringing validation to your name. Plant a seed in someone. Raise the next revivalist. Let there be the people. Let it be like the upper room. Let there be an outpouring. You are interceding. You may be doing that in your room, but let me tell you, you are in America too. You are in Canada too. You are wherever too. In God's mind, you are not wherever his program is, whoever is praying is also there. Are we together? Number two, very quickly. The second way we labor with God as co-laborers, as men that God has found, I call it the labor of active service. The labor of active service. The first is the labor of or the labor in prayer and intercession. The second is called the labor of active service. Matthew chapter 9, 37 and 38. Matthew chapter 9, 37 and 38. Here's Jesus speaking. The harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers, the laborers are few. Verse 38. He says, pray ye therefore. You pray, but the prayer request is that the Lord of the harvest will send forth laborers. The labor of active service. There are those who stay behind and make the spiritual investment. But there are those who go. And they are not just preachers alone. They are in active service in business. They are in active service in governance. In active service in leadership in active service in ministry and with respect to our focus of kingdom come listen let me tell you the truth while it is good to pray we need to pray that god will find more vessels you will think that because there are many preachers on earth there are many business people on earth we've, we've done several teachings i don't want to go there refer to my teaching the fishers of men god is still looking for men did you hear what i said God is still looking for men. When there are few men, they become an endangered species. When Satan strikes one person, that can end, it can impede God's program. 
but when there are mighty people there are strong people when one person is wounded he can stay until he's healed and the program of God continues because there are many men the reason why when Satan strikes one person in a family maybe the person who you call a breadwinner or the person who God is using maybe let me not even speak ministry so that you don't think I'm just talking preaching this person is the businessman that God is using your prayer should not only be to have money and give the people your prayer should be that God will raise many other people too in the rising of many other people is your rest because if you don't rise the day something happens to that company you will watch 12 13 people who have been limited they are depending on you and satan will target when five of them are about to go to the university then something happens to your finances and for three years while you're on your path to recovery your family and everybody connected to you remains down are we together now we must pray that god will raise more people Thank God for the financiers we have in the body of Christ. But we still need more people. So that you don't overburden only one person. Thank God that God has helped you. But by the time everybody is praying on one person, maybe for support, that person is human. They also have their lives. It's the reason why people are so overburdened. Are we together? If in a great ministry like this, I know that every, you know, people love and give and I'm, I'm just making an example. Let's assume there are just four or five people who are involved. I'm just using finance as an example. You, you think the kind of burden that comes on those four or five people. It is the reason why we have to pray and trust God and also obtain grace to be in active service. What does it mean to be in active service? Stay on your lane. Be on your call. Make sure that you are engaged. If you are a preacher, prepare for preaching. And when the green light comes, start preaching. Don't just prepare forever. You have to start. Are we together? You are a businessman. You can't be planning forever. A day has to come, you will start. Many people are planning forever. Active service. Active service. Have you tried to rush to use a restroom or to use an ATM or to use something and you see a statement there, out of service? It is there, but it is useless as far as purpose is concerned. If an ATM is written out of service, it will be insanity to still stand there. No. Except if they motivate you and say it will be resuming shortly. Aha, then you can be motivated. There are many of us even though we are alive but in the spirit there is a statement on our head out of service out of kingdom service in other words when favor is coming there's no need it should come to you you are out of service are we together if help is coming there's no need it comes to your family you are out of service i'm yours jesus i'm yours forevermore I'm yours, Jesus, I'm yours forevermore. Wherever you want to go, Lord, you can go through me. Whatever you want to say, Lord, you can say. To lift, Lord, you can lift through me. Very powerful prayer. The labor of active service. I live a very busy life, but my joy is that I'm serving the King. That in my lifetime I will spend and be spent for His Majesty. Spend and be spent for his majesty active service don't just say i will serve you serve him don't just say i will serve you serve him serve him in whatever capacity god is calling you to ministry go ahead and be serious with your training and as the green light comes obtain grace serve him someone's destiny is dependent on your service 
has called you to an, be an intercessor, serve him. Provision is for those who are serving. Honor is for those who are serving. Favor is for those who are serving, not those who want to serve, not those who are talking about service. I shall not die, but live and declare, not intend to declare. For as long as I'm alive, someone will hear about Jesus. For as long as I'm alive, somebody's sick will be healed. For as long as I'm alive, one oppressed person will have his destiny rewritten. For as long as I'm alive, consistently the word of God will come through me, making, building, mentoring, maturing. For as long as I'm alive, I will continue to receive these graces and be an endless conduit of these possibilities. For as long as I'm alive, it is my commitment. It is a richer, wiser, and fuller way to live. There are many of us who are living as if we're already dead. We're empty already. There is no cause in your life that is the reason why you go to bed. There is no cause in your life that is the reason why you wake up. It is a very bad way to live. Purpose heals. A sense of purpose, it gives you something to do. Hallelujah. All through this week now, we're preaching the gospel, doing what we're doing by the grace of God, and we're back, and the job continues. You may not have the opportunity to preach or travel like this, but where you are, you are building that organization. God already told you that your mandate is to supply resources to the kingdom. God has given you the mandate. It is you that will give a job to 100 graduates who will be able to take care of their family, who will send their younger ones to school. So in your being diligent is somebody's salvation. Get to work. The labor of active service. The grace for entrepreneurship is on you. You may not be a preacher, but you are a minister. Get to work. Build a company. Stop giving excuses. Fail on time until you succeed. Don't run away from failure. You will fail on the way. Fail on time and get it out of the way. So that you now start succeeding. Are we together? Sharpen your skills. You are in the media. Make sure you do what you are doing well. The gospel depends on it. The efficiency of other ministries depend on it. Don't be careless and say, well, I won't go. Go for the training. Build yourself. If you need to get a certification, go on time. Don't wait. Don't waste time. I said I would do it in January. We're in July now. Make up your mind. After service, I will go somewhere. Go and register the company this week. Apostle, I just have 60,000. He can start. Look for a lawyer in Koinonia here and start. And lawyer, if they give you money, make sure you deliver with, with no stories. Because we need to balance these kinds of things. Integrity. So that we don't hear any stories. As you are giving it, go straight and do what you were asked to do. Are we learning? Can I tell you, nothing moves till you move. Nothing moves till you move. The signs follow. The signs follow. God is speaking to you. Start the NGO. Pay the school fees of the children. You want to wait until the day you can pay the school fees of 100 children. Nobody started like that. Start with two. Train them. Focus on two who are about writing Waek. That's Esther you are training Mordecai. That's Ruth you are training Naomi. Make your life count. Don't wake up and just eat and grow old and gossip and tell lies and be angry and be jealous and sleep. It's not a wise way to live. Say my life must count. Shout it, say my life must count. Listen, you are waking yourself up this night. No more waking up in the morning. I wake up when I want to wake up. No consequences. I sleep when I want to sleep. No consequences. The day I feel emotional, I open my Bible. Your life is not governed by anything. There is no vision, nothing driving you. Nothing placing a demand on your time. The labor of active service. You are not just trying to get a job because you are afraid of hunger. You are aware that in doing this, it is my partnership with Jesus. I am a co-laborer. 
I am a co-laborer. If I become a media expert today and I help 20 churches to be effective in their media ministry, that is my assignment. Because of that, if I need to go to America for a three-month program, if I need to go to U.S. for a three-month program, to Canada for a three-month program, don't say I don't have the money. Go and browse what institution you will go first. Nothing moves till you move. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Someone is saying, in my mind is America. There's a place in Abuja here. You can do a one-week training. Start from there. You shall be witnesses in Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Leave the ends of the earth. You will go there tomorrow. But start from Jerusalem. There are many people who want to start from the ends of the earth. And go where after that? There is no joy to the journey again. You start from Jerusalem. Are we together? Then Judea. Then Samaria. You also enjoy the process of growth. But by the time you start from the ends of the earth, where else are you going to go to? I've taught you here, don't hurry seasons. There is a joy that comes with growth. Be fast, but not excessively fast. Enjoy the process of knowing God and serving Him as you grow. Go slow enough to study your growth and mentor others. When your whole tomorrow enters your today, there will not be joy in living again. The labor of active service. The labor of active service. Worshippers, keep bringing the songs. Active service. Go and write the song. Don't just wait for the Holy Spirit to give you. Carry a pen and paper. Open your Bible and sit with a guitar. Sit with a keyboard. You can prime your inspiration. It is me and the Holy Spirit doing this. Don't just lazily sit and say the day the song comes, it will come. No. No. How do you think David wrote all the Psalms he wrote? Inspiration comes when you are at work. Are we together? I hope you are learning. The labor of active service. 1 Timothy 5, 18. Let's hurry up. 1 Timothy chapter 5 and verse 18. 1 Timothy 5, 18. For the scripture saith, thou shalt not muzzle the ox that treaded upon the corn. And then it says, the laborer. Who is worthy of wages? Not the hungry, the laborer. You have to be a laborer to be worthy of wages. Are you seeing why many people are not receiving the wages? Because they are not laborers. I tell you the truth. When we walk, we walk because we love God. But we also walk because we are laborers. There are consolations to this work. There are consolations to this work. Are we together? As a laborer in God's vineyard, let me tell you, there are some things God will never allow you to look for again if you become a true laborer. You don't know the profit in serving God. We don't serve God for money, for cars, and for things, but there is a way a man can serve God. And God will say, because you have served me like this, you will not serve any other thing else. My jealousy will forbid you from following that regular routine towards making life happen. I know what I'm saying. And you don't have to be a preacher. Someone can serve God in a way that God will say, Mama, because you serve me, the least of your children will be a president. That I will never allow mediocrity dwell in this family again. It is a covenant. You have made room for me. When the woman in Shunem made room for the prophet, she was not looking for anything. It was sincere honor without string attached. But the prophet said, no, God does not work like this. You cannot be that kind to me providing a table. What do you want? Should I talk to the, 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 the president, the governor for you? Say, no, I live among my own people. And then the servant now whispered and said, this woman is without child. And he said, according to the time of life. And that was it. The woman didn't even say amen. She didn't say, be it unto me according to your word. He just said, you will embrace a son. There are things you may never have to pray for, for yourself when you are in active service. Now you can be on a job because you are looking for salary. Nothing wrong with that. You can be in a business because you want to be rich. 
You can be a preacher simply because you went to a seminary and you have to do something to justify your going to a seminary. All of those things are not wrong in themselves, but none of them make you a laborer. It is the consciousness that I am in partnership with God. That's why the word koinonia, you see, is intimacy, partnership. I am in partnership with God. Not just saying it, partnership with God. Hallelujah. I never travel alone. I never do the things that I do alone. No, I can fail as a person, but me and God cannot fail together. Honestly, no. Businessman, once you remain a businessman, things may not be working well, but become a laborer, a co-laborer with God by defining your purpose for that business that it is beyond profit. It is profit for Jesus, profit for the kingdom, profit for your glory. You have brought God into that equation. And when God comes in, whatever is not him must give way then you will see wisdom beyond your imagination you will see favor beyond your imagination how do you think we're able to do the things that we're doing today for jesus it is not just man's ability and capacity no there is a side to this equation that i don't have a hand in it is because i'm not the only one you can clearly see my limitation as a man that you started from here and this is where you have stopped but if the result extends this much, there is an invisible hand continuing it. I'm praying for you in the name of Jesus. Men will look at your life and they will literally see your contribution and they will see the God factor too. Nobody will confuse the hand of God upon your life. Nobody will credit your results entirely to your efforts. It will be so spectacular. It will be clear that you were in partnership with God. Ministry in partnership with God. Business in partnership with God. Parenting in partnership with God. Listen. Listen. We labor with God in prayer and intercession over his program. We labor with God as we commit to active service. Number three, the third way we labor with God is through the labor of providing help. The labor of providing help. The labor of providing help. Help in all its ramification. Financial help, help in terms of access. We labor with God. We are co-laborers with God. And I want you to listen. When we are involved in providing help, any kind of scriptural help that becomes an advantage to God's program is your laboring with God. 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 23. 2 Corinthians 8, 23. It says, Whether any do require of Titus, that he is my partner. Is that in your Bible? He is what? He didn't say he's my son. He said he is my partner and fellow helper concerning you. Or our brethren, the messengers of the churches. He called Titus his partner and fellow helper. Partner and fellow helper. Can I tell you this? I found a few interesting scriptures that I want you to look at. Very profound and interesting scriptures. Do you know that in God's program, not everyone is ordained to be a helper to you, but that those who have been called by God to be helpers are actually real people and they have names. Give us Numbers chapter 1 and verse 5. Numbers chapter 1 and verse 5. Go ahead and read. One to read. And these are the names of the men that shall stand with you. Stop there. Read it again. And these are the names of the men. So there are men ordained by God to stand with you as you are standing with God. There are men ordained. Did you hear what I said? It is not just money. 
there are men ordained by God to stand with you. Some of them in high places to make the job easy for you. There are men except you are not a laborer. If it is true you are a laborer, there are men ordained. The men are not invisible. They have names. Give us that scripture again. I saw this scripture in April and I saw it in a dream. These are the names of the men. I've never even seen the scripture myself. It was from a dream. The names of the men that shall stand with you. They are everywhere. They have names. Meaning you can call them. They have names. Some are in America. Some are in Russia. You may not know them, but God knows them. They have been mandated to stand with you. Elijah, go to Zarephath. I have commanded a widow. It's not a suggestion. The woman sounded like she did not know, but God does not lie. I have commanded a helper. Man of God, if you are a laborer, you should never serve with your hand empty. It's a lie. There are names of people commanded by God to stand with you. Except you are not a laborer in dream. I'm not talking of manipulating people. Are we together now? And you don't have to be a preacher. All men need helpers. When Jesus walked upon the earth, he needed helpers. Can I show you something? Help us. You need help us. So this will be one of our major prayers. Acts chapter 19 and verse 22. The third way to labor with God is that your life and all about you provides help for this kingdom come project. Go ahead and read. He said, give us NIV. NIV. NIV will give me what I'm looking for. Go ahead. One to read. He sent two of his helpers, Timothy and Erastus, to Macedonia while he stayed in the province of Asia a little longer. Who did he send? Two of his helpers. Not just sons. Helpers. I have taught you the ministry of help here. That the assignment of help is to make things possible and to make things easy. The assignment of help assistance at any level financially or otherwise is to make things possible and to make things easy if your rent is one million naira and i give you nine hundred thousand what have i done i have helped you i have made that rent payment possible or at least made it easier am i right on that if you're on your way trekking and your trekking will take 30 minutes and i give you a lift Compressing that time to five minutes, I have provided help, made arriving your destination possible and made it easier. Let me tell you why life is hard for many people. Because you have not found helpers. Or because you have not become a laborer deserving of helpers. The third way to be part of this collaborative ministry with Jesus is the labor of providing helps. Can I show you one more scripture? You know where? Eh? When the Holy Spirit opens your eyes, you will now check the Bible and you will see things that you have not seen before. Do you know, in preparing these notes, the Holy Spirit opened my eyes and I saw where Paul took time. If you see the long list of helpers Paul wrote, this ministry of Paul that we say two thirds of the New Testament, you need to know how many people helped him. You want to see it? Romans chapter 16. Let's begin from verse 1. The names are hard. I won't attempt, I will just be jumping the names. So I'm telling you in advance now. Are we together? One to go. I commend, no, 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 well, I would start, if, if I say we should do it together, there will be a lot of confusion because there are plenty of names there. Yet they are all helpers. I commend you to Phoebe, our sister. Um, let me look at this from, okay, go ahead, go ahead, give it to us. I commend you to Phoebe, our sister, which is a servant of the church. Are you seeing all those names now? They've started, oh, verse 2. That ye receive her, listen, 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 listen. That ye receive her in the Lord. 
he's, come, he's recommending the lady now as become it saints and that ye assist her in whatsoever business she had need of you for she had been a succorer of many even myself have benefited from her this is the apostle speaking he said this woman is coming to your city the same way she has invested help make sure you help her too whatever she needs to be effective provide for her because this woman has been a succorer of many he says even me have benefited next verse there are other people to greet not everybody greet priscilla and aquila who are they my helpers feel free to greet anyone you meet on the road but from me greet priscilla and aquila why because they are helpers in christ jesus verse 4 who have for my life laid down their own necks unto whom not only i give thanks but also all the churches of the gentiles this is the extent of their help verse 5 likewise greet the church that is in their house it says salute my well beloved look at that name look at that name for god's sake yeah that is the name of a helper so it doesn't matter the name of the helpers if they are helpers it will be there who is the first fruit of Achaia unto Christ? Verse 6. Greet Mary, who bestowed much labor on us. Are you seeing all the people he's greeting? Let's just stop at verse 6. You can read down. This man took a list. Your busy apostle took a list of noting certain people. The people he called were not just apostles. There. He was calling helpers. People who had made his weakness easy. This is, this is something that the body of Christ does not understand. We have dealt with manipulations. We have dealt with the subject of, you know, you know, fraudulent activities. But to stop there is dangerous. The church must be educated to know that being a co-laborer with God means that you must stand to make his work easy in every ramification let me tell you sincerely and i submit to you with all humility i have seen pastors and i've seen people who love jesus christ with all their hearts and some of them have seen their lives and their living conditions and it's a very terrible thing i've seen their wives i've seen their children and sometimes you are wondering the people that they labor over is it that the people are not thoughtful to know that I have a God-ordained assignment? You see, let me teach you something, dear people. And, and, and it's very uncomfortable for me, but I have to teach you because it's the truth. Anytime you find yourself in a place, not just a ministry, participate in making the overall value process effective. Do not just be a bench warmer make sure your seed your goodwill your prayer if you have influence and it can become a leverage are we together the ministry of helps is not just limited to finances that everything within your power and i bless god for great people in this ministry and in my life who have played these strategic roles they have made the service of god easy several things Right now, there's the U.S. team, Canada team. We're not there yet, but they are helpers, laboring day and night, making things happen. There are people who have given and given and given again. Helpers. The Bible talks about Uzziah. I think that should be Second Chronicles chapter 26 and verse 15, if I recall, that Uzziah prospered because he was marvelously helped of God. It is on the strength of help that people go forward. Second Chronicles, I believe, 26 and verse 15. Prospered because he was marvelously helped. That he was helped until he made progress. Marvelously helped. And his fame, his name spread far abroad. For he was marvelously helped till he became strong. You never become strong until you are helped. Helped in business. Helped in ministry. Are we together? 
there are some of you here and, and i want to listen to me your one naira your one dollar has never gone into the project of kingdom come i'm teaching you this as a responsibility it is a very bad attitude now you don't have to but if you love jesus and you are trained to be a responsible believer you learn this no kingdom program should happen within a ministry within a life within a vessel you are part of as an individual i have seeds that have sown for sound of revival us canada are we together uk i have seeds that are prepared for our november conference coming it does not matter that I'm a man of God. It does not matter that I lead this ministry. Obedience is obedience. Disobedience is disobedience. Kingdom principles are kingdom principles. Beyond a man of God, I'm a co-laborer with God. This is the reason why you see God continues to do the things that he's doing. Helps. Haven't obtained help from God. I continue this day. It takes help to continue. Are we together now? Yes. Sometimes, honestly, and I'm saying this not, not to spite you, I love you with all my heart, but sometimes I sit down and I think to myself, if I was depending on men for tea and bread, maybe one day I would just come here and get a chair and sit down and start crying. And just sit down and say, you people, is it that you have not... <laughs> You are givers, don't worry. I know you are givers, all right? God is helping you, but I'm teaching you the truth is still the truth. And some of you have money, which, is, which makes it worse. Don't say you love Jesus if your seed is not part of his program. When you love, you give. If you cannot give seeds, you can give access. Access. If it takes 10 minutes for a job to be done and under your influence it can be done in two minutes without compromise and become an edge for the gospel you have provided helps are we together yes so many believers do not know that this is a way we labor with God we labor with God I remember a woman who humorously sent me a text and said apostle you are coming to Canada and an, an elderly mother in fact perhaps she's even watching now and she said please I'm ready to provide your meals and all of that and I just laughed to myself I said no there are younger people how how do, will I be so stupid to allow a woman the age of my grandmother to be cooking for me while I'm there I want to live long <laughs> are we together rather I should be sowing into her life to bless her but there are some of you, Jesus is passing, it's none of your business. Jesus needs a boat, it's none of your business. Okay, he has caught the fish. Help him and bring it to the boat, it's none of your business. Help to smoke the fish to preserve it so it, there's no decadence, it's none of your business. Okay, call other laborers to come and join, it's none of your business. And yet we hypocritically say, Lord, I love you. You know, even you, you know, and God says no. This is a strange, unfamiliar voice. It's a voice that does not participate in my program. I tell you sincerely, and I say this under God, if I were not a preacher, probably a major part of my ministry would have been providing helps to see the work of God go forward. I'm looking for people who establish a business with a covenant from God. They are already blessed though, but they are establishing a business and the purpose is to fund the gospel. It is your way of contributing to the integrity of preachers that this compromises here and there because of finances. It is not just enough to point fingers. Let me take that responsibility and be empowered by God to see to it that succor can be provided here. For as long as I live, every effort I can make financially, using the bit of influence and access god has given that can make the program of god advance i will not spare in giving my best 
I have written it in songs. They have become my contemplations and my meditations. And this is my pledge unto God. If I can help somebody go to school as a way of providing more room for laborers to come, I will do that. If I can help somebody to be healthier than he or she is, if I can encourage a man of God who is discouraged and that can help him to stand strong in integrity, I will do it. Listen, don't just profess and shout, I love you, Jesus. No. And please, by this talk, don't allow any pressure. I'm not putting pressure on your finances at all. But it's important to learn this. It's, it's responsibility. There's not supposed to be a special time to collect offering or call. no once believers are mentored every time you hear of god's program immediately you know i am a co-laborer my best lord is everything i have my best lord i give all i have to you my best lord is everything i have my best Lord, I give all I have to you. Jesus, if my vehicle can help the gospel get faster, find honor in using it. If my home can help your program to, to go places faster, let it be an honor. Jesus, if my Bible can be used, as an accelerator system for the gospel. We grew up with an orientation that we did not own anything. And everything we have belongs to him. Most Christians say that, but it's just church talk. They don't mean it. They don't mean it. Sincerely, let me tell you, and I'm sharing with you this. Every major money that God brings to my life, God sees my heart. I already know that there is a portion of it for kingdom. There is a portion for my well-being. There's a portion for my future. But there is a portion for kingdom come. It is impossible for God to show me mercy. And then I carry everything and open my mouth and throw it in. No. I love him more than that. It is the reason why his hand does not spare in being outstretched because he has seen that your heart is truly with him. Is someone learning now? Yes. Co-laborers. God is seeking for a man who will stand in prayer and intercession for God's program. God is seeking for a man who will go Go in all its ramification, not just talk, not just confess, but go. Making your life count. God is trusting a man who becomes a helper of the war. Do you know, I'm praying that the body of Christ becomes more matured to know the things that are worthy of celebration. Things like I am a millionaire. Things like I am a billionaire. Thank God for that took a lot of labor to get there but what gives value to what we have and what we are and please listen to me what gives value to what we have and what we are is its connection to the program of God I am beautiful thank God for that but that beauty stands useless from an eternal standpoint until that beauty can find a way of partnering with the purposes of God. I am intelligent. That intelligent is vain until that intelligence is converted and routes its way to revealing Christ. I am wealthy. That wealth will remain like that of the rich fool until it is channeled to the adequate kingdom programs that make a difference. By the privilege of God Almighty this week, as we travel, I only imagine in my heart the multitudes who will be coming to Jesus. I only imagine in my heart the truths that will penetrate through systems, moving beyond the barrier of cultures. Someone's healing, someone's deliverance, someone who is going to walk into that auditorium sick 
under death sentence but by the life giving ministry of the spirit are you seeing that now someone but that has been possible because of intercessors because of we who have agreed to go and because of helpers determined people who are saying once it is this work of the kingdom you will do it in comfort you will do it in peace listen to me everybody here is in one or two or all three of these categories if you are to be a co-laborer with God and I'm leaving with you a consciousness today a consciousness everything you do that adds to making kingdom come happen counts and like I will always say here one day you will stand before Jesus and Jesus himself will look at you and say thank you for going to US thank you for going to Canada and you say but I never went there he said oh no 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 you did when my son was there you stood with him your seed took him your prayer preserved him your encouraging text message may the Lord go with you sir that is helps don't just limit it to money are we together yes there are people today as we are fasting they've been fasting too as we are praying they've been praying too and some of them are not necessarily even part of the koinonia global family people have given some have have thought that their identities be closed but let's just be part of god's program people have traveled even from africa here to be helpers let me teach you something believers god is seeking for men but not all kinds of men the assignment of this teaching tonight is to help you become the kind of man that God will find the kind of man that God will say finally I have found a vessel a vessel that I can trust to pray my program down that you can take a man of God as your intercessory project you can take a church as your intercessory project you can take the program of God as an intercessory project and we may not even know you but you are on your knees before the father Lord, let the gospel find its cause. Grant utterance, grant accuracy as they teach. Back up your word with signs and wonders following. And whilst you are doing that in the quietness of your room, heaven is watching you. And in heaven's mind, with everyone going to the crusade ground, you are there too. And as the souls come out, it is also credited to you in heaven. You are also a soul winner. You are also a destiny changer. But you are asking, I was not there to lead the prayer, but your prayer made it work. Somebody who would have been saved would not have come because the spirit of darkness had blinded the person. But while you were interceding, you gave a right of way for angelic forces to ward off those spirits. And the person made up his mind. He said, you know what? Let me go on YouTube. And boom! That was the message the person had. How about the person who has invited others? Be part of this. This is not just for likes and follows. Your destiny is about to change. Listen. And whilst listening, one word coming from the throne. One word. One word. Maybe one worship. Whilst you just tune in. Someone who has been broken at all kinds of addictions. But one sound of worship in heaven. Coming through a vessel. And that's the end of it. That person is broken there in the room. You may never see, but heaven has seen it. Can I tell you? Let's stop being empty professors of I love you, Jesus. And plunge ourselves to be co-laborers. When I told you you were God's investment, you received it. It brought such joy and healing. But also know that when you invest 10 naira, you invest 20 naira. You expect something to come out of it. Is that true? When he gave unto one five talent and two talent and one talent, the Bible says he returned back after a while and said, let me see my investment. 
if you are his investment then you must allow yourself to bring him joy he called the one who did not grow that investment a wicked and unprofitable servant but to the one who brought him gain he said enter into the joy of the Lord you have been captain over a few I will make you captain over many it is my prayer that as we do the things that we do for the kingdom as an individual and as a ministry we will be able to make our contribution in bringing the harvest this is what it's all about in helping to disciple nations to take the power of Jesus like I would always say it our fathers who have joined the cloud of witnesses they've done their own there was a time they were young like us too they had the energy you watch their videos today and you are saying this man who sounds quiet was this vibrant I watched one of um, Daddy Joe's I think uh, 1991 was it 1991 or so one of the videos and you could see I mean not youthfulness really was still not younger then but I mean you can imagine take joy my king in what you hear let it be a sweet sweet sound in your ears take joy my king in what you see and let it be a sweet sweet sound in your ears. we have two prayer points tonight God is seeking for men. The first prayer point, I will say it, you will say the first seated, then the second prayer point you will stand. The first prayer point, Father, let your program of world evangelization, let your program of territorial transformation happen through me. Let it be a reality through my life. Let it be a reality through my prayer and intercession. Let it be a reality through my participation. Let it be a reality through my providing help. Help in all its ramification. Go ahead and pray. Following online, make sure you pray. Father, let your program, your kingdom come program, your program of world evangelization, your program of discipling nations, your program of transforming territories with the life-giving power of the spirit oh let it happen with me let it happen with me let it happen through me go ahead and pray go ahead and pray go ahead and pray i sing praises to your name Oh God, praises to your name. Oh God, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. I sing praises to your name. Oh. great and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. So you are praying that the world missions, global evangelization, bringing the lost, the unsaved to the fold, discipling nations with the life-giving truths, bringing the healing power of Jesus to the nations, setting the captives free, and then transforming territories by altering the beliefs of men, helping them to live meaningful lives with dignity and honor. That Lord, 
this your program let I know that I have a role to play and my prayer is that I be part of your your program through my prayer and intercession through my participation and commitment in whatever way and then through my givings using my influence using access resources it's a very powerful prayer when you get back home I want you to still pray it again pray it pray it pray it the final prayer now you stand this one concerns you and please I want you to pray it's an investment you are making to your destiny that as I commit to advancing the kingdom oh God send me all the helpers required for my witness to be efficient we have seen here that helpers play major irrefutable roles you are praying crying unto the God of the heavens that hence I am committed committed to advancing your kingdom all the helpers and all the helps that I need financial helpers helpers that use their influence to make life easy for me whilst I serve Lord I declare that they are sent they come according to Numbers chapter 1 and verse 5 go ahead and pray go ahead and pray Numbers chapter 1 and verse 5 and these are the names of the men that shall stand with you these are the names of the men that shall stand with you the resource persons that will stand with you the financial helpers that will stand with you the leaders and gatekeepers that will stand with you someone pray I have committed to serving your purposes I have committed my life everything that I have to see that Jesus is revealed and glorified therefore Lord send me help satisfy me early with your mercy the ideas needed let it come speedily the resources needed let it come speedily the gift of men speedily providing me access men of influence that can help redeem time men who have a voice within the cosmos whose speakings can be accelerator systems to my advancement someone pray one helper can make your witness effective one financial helper can become a leverage to your effective witness let it be a heartfelt prayer from your heart you've committed to serving his purposes now pray for help not just that you will be a helper but that you will be helped by God go ahead and pray go ahead and pray father you are seeking for a man I am available you are seeking for a man you are seeking for a preacher I am available a businessman I am available and usable available and usable in whatever way you desire to use me use me for your glory everything I have belongs to you go ahead and pray in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus do you think God deserves your all do you think he deserves your best yes. my hallelujah belongs to you my hallelujah belongs to you it's my confession from my spirit that my hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. 
Can you sing? You deserve it. Hey, you deserve it. said and done be glorified oh God all of the glory belongs to you sing all of the glory all of the glory belongs to you all of the glory with someone by your left and right let's pray for the sound of revival US the sound of revival Canada that this week we have prayed but let's pray again sow that seed we're praying as a global family go ahead as far as your hand can reach you're holding hands and together we are praying in the name of Jesus Christ let there be a reign of salvation let there be a reign of healing let there be a reign of deliverance let your word come with power. Let the gospel be ministered with clarity and precision. Oh, let a harvest come to Jesus. Let a harvest come. A mighty harvest. Let nations be discipled. Learning the ways of the Spirit. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. You are sowing that seed as an intercessor in the name of Jesus you are sowing that seed signs and wonders be wrought in the name of your holy son go ahead all those traveling across the globe go ahead we are praying all over the US, all over Canada. Let there be a reign of your spirit. We declare safety in flight. Safety for those going by road. Safety for those going by train. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Oh, and with great power, the Lord will give witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. Let great grace be upon us. Let great grace be upon us. Pray that the anointing will be upon the airwaves, that all those connecting, they will receive a touch from God, that no one will escape the saving power of Jesus, the healing power of Jesus. Hallelujah. Keep your hands together. We're going to pray that one prayer and then we're done. We're a responsible family. I'm not just traveling for a conference. We are going as a family in the name of the Lord. Make sure that all through you participate. Call your loved ones. You will be surprised that something you did not receive here, you will receive during the conference. It is not a U.S. conference. It is only happening in the U.S. It is not a Canada conference. It's only happening in Canada. It is God reaching the nations. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I want to sing this song just once and then we're done. Let the weight of your glory fall. I'm not sure. Can you take it? I don't want to shout. Let the weight of your glory fall. Let it cover all the earth. Let the weight of your glory fall. That's our prayer. Let it cover all the earth. 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 Let the weight of your glory fall. Let the weight of your glory 
us a prayer as a global family. Let it cover all from the United States to Canada to India to Russia to Africa, Kenya, Ghana, Mozambique, Cote d'Ivoire, South Africa, Nigeria. Let your glory blanket the entire globe. Time now, let the weight of your glory fall. Signs and wonders that will shake the nations. The revelation of Jesus that will enthrone him in the hearts of men. Grace, grace abundant, grace multiplied, grace abundant, grace multiplied. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for tonight's service. You seek men. You are still seeking for men. We are available. We pledge ourselves again. We are available and usable for your glory. Do with us as you please. Do with us as you see, as you desire. From our hearts, we desire to see Jesus lifted. Lord, we pray as a global family, you've granted us the mandate to the nations. And this week, we're taking your healing power, your life-giving power, even to the nations. Lord, we declare our frailty out of your, outside of your help and your mercy. A man cannot do these things except, he cannot receive anything except it is given to him of heaven by God. Lord, we pray that you will help us show us mercy for the tens of thousands who are attending from all over the globe all over the united states all over canada we pray that flesh will not be glorified that this will not be the ambition of a man or a ministry but that we will hide behind the cross and see jesus revealed in the name of jesus bring great glory to your name bring great glory to your name shake the foundations of the nations in the name of Jesus do with us what only God can do with men and I pray oh God that as we stand in prayer as we stand in partnership all over the globe Lord that whatever blessings come from this conference let it rest on everyone not just on Joshua Selman, not just on Koinonia in the US, let it rest on Koinonia Global. Amen. That everyone who is connected to this vision will also be a partaker of the blessings. Amen. We hand over this conference unto you and we declare be glorified. Amen. For in Jesus name we pray. Amen. amen and amen. Let me make the altar call and then we're done. Thank you. Please keep standing everyone. Let the conference start with you tonight. We don't have to wait until we're, we get to the shores of the US or Canada. Salvation is for all men and every way and every time is convenient. Provided there is an ear to hear, there is a heart malleable enough to make Jesus Lord, there is a preacher to announce the gospel, then God's power is available. For someone, you don't have to wait until the conference begins. Today is your day of salvation. God is looking for men. He's looking for those who will trust him enough to be recipients of his life. I'm going to count one to five. Thank you very much, my brother, for being bold to come. Wherever you are, I want you to take your bags, your Bibles, run and come and stand here. 
don't be ashamed don't sit down calculating anything this is the business of salvation your life is about to change in the name of Jesus every blindfold upon your eyes that is not stopping you from seeing the light of the glorious gospel we tear it now in Jesus name and I declare I begin my counting now one to five please leave your seat very boldly wherever online Jesus is calling you every day is an opportunity to make Jesus Lord one keep coming koinonia let's encourage them remember we are co-laborers with Jesus two three come oh be lifted keep coming above all other gods we lay our crowns and worship you oh glorious god we praise your name we lay our crowns and worship you are you coming to jesus oh glorious god we praise your name we lay our crown we lay our crowns they are, they are coming let's celebrate them as they come we lay our crown Jesus thank you so much my brothers and my sisters thank you for heeding to this call the Bible declares that as many who will come to him he will in no wise cast them away perhaps you are here and you are saying apostle mine is to rededicate my heart I know that my ways are not right with God even though I remember making this decision is there room for me let me give you a few seconds to join them you belong to that second category very quickly very quickly very quickly if you are joining them walk very fast walk very fast and join them and we say the prayer together I desire to rededicate my life to Jesus no playing games I want to start afresh decided to follow him wholly God bless you thank you God bless you God bless you hallelujah Praise the name of the Lord. Now before I pray the salvation prayer with them, just to let us know that all of the conferences would be broadcast live on all our social media platforms. Yeah, so we have three sessions for U.S. U.S. starts on Wednesday the 17th. So Wednesday um, the 17th is going to be midnight, unfortunately. It starts 5 five will be about 10 or 11 african time nigeria particularly um so be awake and trust god clear your calendar be awake make sure you gather your family together follow is 5 p.m and then the morning we have um 9 a.m the morning session on thursday and then the final session will be 5 p.m and then just for you to know that there will be a Sunday service in the US there will be help this woman under the anointing there will be a Sunday service in the US exactly koinonia time so there will be a service um, that that will be 11 a.m. I think then it will coincide with 5 p.m. here and then Canada will be Wednesday also Wednesday um, the 24th same um, timing evening morning session final session and then we're on our way um, back so pray for us and let's trust God for a great experience don't wait to be told it's going to be a great time for our family in US all is said and done we're ready and um, Canada we're also ready and Koinonia Global we're ready the body of Christ we're ready to see what Jesus would do and we give him all the glory in Jesus name for our brothers and sisters who are here thank you very much may I request that you lift your right hand 
Lift it high above your head as a sign of surrender. Say after me, Lord Jesus, tonight I have heard your word. I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sin. Right now, I receive Jesus into my heart as my Savior, my Lord, and my King. I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. From tonight and forever, I'm a child of God. I go forward ever and backward never. Let me pray for you. My sister, look at me. This lady, I curse that spirit now. In the name of Jesus, be released from that demonic influence. I release you now. In the name of Jesus, let her go never to return to her again by the power that raised Christ from the dead. Every covenant you have with darkness is broken by the blood of the eternal covenant. In Jesus' name. Father, thank you for these precious ones. They have come declaring your lordship over their lives. And upon the profession of their faith in you, I declare that their sins are forgiven and that in the name of Jesus, abundant life is theirs this moment. The power over sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is released upon you. I call you the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You go from glory to glory, grace to grace, for in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please look to my right. That will be your left. There are counselors waving the placard. They'll have a word with you and they will pray with you very quickly and you are back to your seat. Let's honor them, Koinonia. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Let me speak the blessing over you. We're done. In the name of Jesus, let this be a week of glory for you. Amen. Shout a believing amen. amen. Everything God has ordained for you this week, in the name of Jesus, the week will not end until every one of those blessings appear. Amen. If it is help, let it appear. Amen. If it is prosperity, let it appear. Amen. If it's restoration, let it appear. Amen. If it's wisdom, let it appear. Amen. If it's a miracle job, let it appear. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Whatever needs to happen this week to move you forward, that you will make constructive progress in your life, your destiny, and also in advancing God's program. I agree with you, may it happen speedily. Amen. This week I declare over you that no weapon fashioned against you will prosper. And that every tongue that rises up against you will fall in judgment. You have no business with death this week. Your loved ones are supernaturally protected. I speak abundance to your life. I speak favor to your life. Your love for Jesus is waxing hotter and hotter. You will see results this week. Supernatural testimonies this week. On Sunday, you will be the first to stand and testify. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. God bless you together. Let's share the grace in fellowship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercies follow us all the days of our lives as we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. See you on Sunday.